TikTok. And TikTok, we want to make sure we get on every platform today. Uh, give people some time to get in. Uh, a couple people inboxed me the other day and said, you always start right away. You don't give anybody time to get in. And that is true. So we're going to give you guys some time. To, those that are interested in hearing from the uh, old minister, ML Kimball, we're going to give you some time to get in. So, how y'all doing? I hope y'all doing fine. But we, we are going to, I'm going to try to keep my cool today. Um, I, I felt like I needed to do something a little bit more professional. Uh, because we are getting ready to take this thing to the next level within the courts. So, I need to watch the uh, professionalism when I'm discussing what has transpired in Swanton, Ohio. So I'm giving y'all time to get in. Those on, on TikTok, we are live on every platform, I do believe. Um, it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Uh, I am glad to be with you all today and those of you that are going to take the time out to listen to me. Um, so... All right, looks like TikTok's starting to load on up, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to say is I want to say is I have the utmost respect for any soldier that fought for this country. Um, but you ain't going to get me to say that scam that they're going to tell everybody to say today. But what I will say is I have the utmost respect for any veteran uh, that fought and served for this country for whatever reason. Um, I, I think it's something that we need to take more look at, um, how they treat the veterans today. It, it, it's, it's really, really sad when you look at, uh, what they've done for this country and for you and I. So the reality is I am not, you know, about the whole American, you know, how I am. Uh, those of you that really know me, um, I'm not picking no sides because I think both sides are scams. I don't care what you tell me because I can pull up some dirt on both sides. Um, but the reality of it is there has been people that have fought, bled, and died on those fields in this American country that we owe more than just one day called Memorial Day or one day called Veterans Day. We need to honor the veterans just as well as we need to honor the elderly. Now, if you disagree with that, I really don't give a damn because the first thing you must understand is you're talking to a minister and the Bible talks about how we are supposed to show honor to our elders. And if you think for one second that somebody that fought, bled, and died does not deserve your honor, but you can run around and scream on this Jesus that you never met. I have an indictment against you. So I wanted to give that in the beginning. I wanted to let you all know, uh, although I'm not going to say happy that day, but I am going to definitely, definitely give honor and reverence to any veteran that fought in, uh, for this country. Period. That goes for black, white, Mexican. I don't care who you are. If you suited up and stood before the United States government as a soldier in any capacity, you are owed respect and honor. And if you disagree with that, get off my damn page. Don't follow me. Don't watch me. Because as soon as I find out who you are, I'm going to put you on blast and block you anyway. So if you think you got an issue with what I just said, then just don't follow me, please. Now, second thing I wanted to do today is I wanted to make sure that, you know, when I'm talking to you guys, I'm not just babbling about stuff that, you know, because they they like to put a, a, a picture on us anyway of what we normally and how we would react to situations. So I wanted to come with some evidence. Now, with TikTok, you guys, it's going to be pretty hard for you guys because uh, you won't be able to see my screen. But I will be reading to you every single thing that I am seeing on my screen. So understand that what I'm going to share with you 
is information that is off the screen that anybody can look up anywhere. Because I don't want you guys to think that I have some special indictment against my former employer, McNeil Chevrolet, or I have some special, let me get you back, or let me just try to come at you any old, no. You played with me when you called me impersonating the police, the same police department that neglected my business an hour after the alarms were notified, allowed whoever intruder to come into my business, spray paint the word nigger all over my walls, rob me, destroy my building. And then on top of that, the same police department allowed the property owner to take back illegal ownership of the building that we had a recorded land contract on. And she got no orders from court, changed the locks on us, and sold whatever products that we had left in the building on Facebook after she and her buddies went through whatever was left and we got a bunch of garbage given back to us. This entire time we were covered by State Farm Insurance Company. So these people that were supposed to be right there in your neighborhood Instead of them acknowledging the fact that there's no way Mr. Kimball could have had anything to do with something like this, especially because how would he have known the police were going to be an hour late to respond? And I will tell you right now that my close family and friends that I know, none of them hang around Swanton, Ohio at six o'clock in the morning. In fact, I had family members that just did not come to see me at the dealership because they just did not like the area. I'm not making up things about this town. I'm telling you the God's honest truth. You understand? I'm not telling you something that you just to cause a problem in a riff. No, for years, I was the only African-American probably within miles of the airport. Now, I could be wrong. I could be wrong on that, but let's just be honest. If you're in this area, you're bound to deal with issues. Now, some of those issues, what I did was I just brushed it off and said, hey, they're paying me a hundred grand a year. They're giving me a free car. They're not racist. They love me. We're family. And I took the jokes of being called Harambe. I, I took the jokes of being called Toby. I took the jokes of being called the token black guy. I took that for seven years. And never once was I ever going to mention it or bring it up again because I resigned from this position. They didn't just fire me. I chose to leave. I was never going to ever talk about this again until my store was broken into over two years ago by the same police department that neglected to investigate who could it have been. State Farm never even investigated anybody at McNeil's. And so then we fast forward to just a few months ago this year, they McNeil Chevrolet calls me on the phone impersonating the Swanton police. Now, I don't know about you, but if I did that right now, let's see what time it is right now. Let's see what the clock says. I just want to know. If I did, it's 2.51 right now. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm 40 years old. I've been born and raised in the Toledo area. But if I called somebody right now, acting like the Toledo Police Department, and they got evidence of me doing so, I bet you that by 3.30 max, I'm in handcuffs. This is this, what this, this, they got me. I've got a record. I've got fines. And if someone took me as harassing them, they could literally pursue me in court because it is harassment, especially when you know exactly what I'm battling and been battling out since my store was taken from me. 
I had insurance. State Farm chose to investigate me. Couldn't find any evidence whatsoever about me. Typed up in their documents that I showed up to court with a suit, wearing a loud tie, with a bunch of jewelry on, and was very braggadocious. No, I was very confident in what I was saying because I was telling the truth about everything I said. See, you're mad because I don't come in here and sound stupid and I don't just fall out and be, I everything you had me to ask Mr. Kimball, I came back with double sword. So don't give me that Mr. Attorney. But yet he puts this down on the paper and then State Farm has the nerve to say they are not making racial decisions. What the hell did my clothing, which by the way, I did not show up with a loud uh, tie. It was a solid pink tie with a blue suit and some brown tan shoes. I was looked very professional. I know how to go into court. I know how to get on stage and perform. I know how to preach. I know what to wear when it's all different occasions. I did not work out at McNeil's for eight, almost eight years as the finance manager of this dealership if I did not know how to at least do that. So the reality is State Farm literally put this stuff in documents, didn't even investigate any of the people that I was in circle with my entire life. They literally investigated everybody around me that looked like me. So they wanted to know everything about my sister and everything about who I called and all my friends and everybody in my little circle. But they never once asked anybody at McNeil's anything. And now my speculation at this point, if he can call me and act like the police department, how do I not know? How do I know that you're not responsible or you don't have anything to do with or you don't know somebody that knows somebody that had something to do with what happened to my store? And I'm upset with the entire city because I was I, I thought I had a connection with Swanton. Me and the mayor, I thought he was watching me sing karaoke every other night. I got the evidence. We were having conversations back and forth on Facebook. I have the evidence. So I was at, at one point part of the elite in that downtown Swanton area. Nowhere on the scene, let me for, not forget to tell you, I live about 22 miles away from where my store was. So I'm at home in bed. The police are two minutes walking distance from my building. They're alerted at 6.45, there's a disturbance at the store and they don't show up until 7.15. And the word nigger is sprayed on the wall. And then I get invested. I get told that I had something to do with with no evidence. I've never even been charged with a crime in my entire life. I'm a damn notary. Are you kidding? I'm a minister on the state of all. You got to be kidding me. You can implicate this stuff without no evidence. You can literally call me a criminal just because you want to. And there's no repercussions. State Farm, I am not stopping until we go to the highest court in the land. And we are going to stick it as far as we can back to you the way you did it to us because you have robbed my entire life from me. You were supposed to be my insurance company, State Farm. Now, let's get to this McNeil stuff. I want to share my screen and I want to go through each and every single thing that I was able to make sure I looked and verified. And so I want to go over some things. Uh, now, I know I know how to do this. Y'all give me one minute. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Okay, there we go. All right, so I wanted to go over a few things with you all. Those of you all that are watching me live, we're going to go over a few things. Now, I want to go over the first law, and I'm reading straight from the law, okay? ORC 2921.14, 525.03, impersonating a public official or public servant. No person shall falsely pretend or represent himself to be a public official or public servant 
I can say I'm a notary, but everybody can't say that with intent to induce another to submit to such pretend official authority. That's fake preachers too. See, don't nobody pay attention to these laws. This is a real law that exists, which covers more than just somebody acting like a cop because a dang on public servant covers preachers. But it says submit to su such pretended official authority or otherwise to act in reliance upon that pretense to his prejudice. Whoever violates this section is guilty of impersonating a public official or public servant. Just you work at a damn dealership. You are not a public servant. I am. You're not. A misdemeanor of the second degree. So right there, that tells you that that's the first law that was broken. Okay. The second thing, whosoever violates division C or D of this section is guilty of a misdemeanor of the first degree. If the purpose of a violation of Division D of this section is to commit or facilitate the commission of a felony, a violation of Division D is the felony of the fourth degree in Ohio. To establish a viable claim of harassment, a complainant, myself, must show that he or she belongs to a statutory protected class. Let's talk about that. Because this is not just women and sexual harassment. This also covers African American. Don't sit here and tell me that this ain't got no race involved with it when nigger was put on my wall and nothing was done about it. In fact, it was put, the blame was put on me. Like somehow I knew you were gonna be late and I just, I had the magic in my brain to have the time for you to, the business lit up the whole downtown. We lit up every business. You, when you couldn't downtown swine, you couldn't get down there without seeing our store. I've got the evidence. There's videos everywhere. Just look it up. So verbal or physical conduct involving the protected class. The harassment complained or was based on the statutory protected class. The harassment had the purpose or effect or unreasonably interfering with work performance. So let's talk about this. Here's the classes that they're talking about. So we've got to make sure I'm not just putting a false indictment on McNeil. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it. I didn't even want to involve these guys. I thought I could trust them. At this point, you all look like you're all in cahoots, everybody. The mayor, what the hell you said to me, I've got the conversation. You said you're going to get another police department involved to help investigate my case because you were so heartbroken when I told you how ridiculous your police officers treated me. They interrogated me, fingerprinted me at my store on the spot as a criminal, y'all. You, know, I show up, I'm in tears, can't believe my store is destroyed and before my eyes. Not only did the insurance agent State Farm ignore me for the entire time I called them to report the claim, nine times I called that day and I got ignored. It's right, six minutes from my store. All these people in the same... In walking distance with each other. I want you to understand this. I show up after 8.30. The cops already done turned off lights. They done turned off apparent what they said was water running. They had their little feel because I didn't get there until after 8.30. And when I walked in, they turned the lights off so that I would not see the word nigger on the wall. How do I know this? I'm not making this up, Swanton PD. Because when I got there, I, I turned the lights on like I did every day when I came into my building. I turned the lights on. First thing I see is these words. They say, officer, did you see this? Yeah, we saw it. How'd you see it? What'd you do? Turn the lights off so you wouldn't hope that I would see it so you could later say I did it later? I don't know what type of a scam is running in this damn city, but it was done 
And those people need to be held accountable. It's, it, you can't just walk away from this and then call me acting like the police. And I'm supposed to believe you didn't have anything to do with this. You're somebody at McNeil's. I don't care who. State Farm, go back and reinvestigate every single body. That means the entire dealership. Why? Because I worked with them for seven years as the finance manager. But somehow you didn't ask none of them anything. But you yet you claim you pulled a full investigation on me. No, you didn't, State Farm. You made your determination early on and you found every reason and you took a year to make the decision to deny a legitimate claim. And if you think I don't have evidence of all the things I'm saying, my mother taught me, well, rest in peace, Cindy Purdue. She taught me how to keep records. I've got every single record from day one, including every single dollar that I spent on my entire business out there. I've got pictures. I've got videos. Now, McNeil's, I've got evidence just as simple as the little bitty black boy birthday card that you guys gave me for my birthday. If you want to sit here and play these games like you did not, I did not tolerate racist bullshit all them years of working there. Hold on, y'all. I got some proof of that. You don't think that this is racist as hell. I don't know what else to tell you. Now, this is what I received on my birthday from the entire dealership. Happy birthday. I'm the finance manager, y'all. I ain't never been no salesman. So I came in the door as the guy making the determination if you got a car or not, new or used, in a completely, predominantly white area. You don't believe me? I went to their Facebook page the other day, and there hasn't been any. There's two African Americans that bought a car in the last year. If they're taking pictures, because if they take pictures every day, it's still not any black people going out there for a reason. This is what I got for my birthday from the dealership. You think it's cute, but it's a little black boy on a car, cart in front of a Chevy dealership, Chevy car. Here's the problem, and here's where the little cute story falls apart. And I kept this just because I knew one day I'd have to show my evidence of who these people were to me. My mom and grandma always told me to do not trust those folks. And I tried my best to think that they cared about me. If they cared about me. Where in the hell were they when my store was broken into? You know what they told me? If I'm going after the police, they had to disconnect from me. And that came straight from the manager. The same guy that called me acting like the police. Happy Memorial Day, Jason. Uh-huh. Now, look, this card is what I received. Now, here's the problem and why their story falls completely apart. Every person that signed this card happened to be Caucasian. Every one of them, because there was nobody else African-American besides me. If you don't think this was given to me as a joke, and it shows just a minute piece of what I tolerated out there, that's why I'm so upset that they did this to me. And to call me acting like the police, come on, man. I thought they was offering me a job, trying to bring me back out there to help me come out of the mess that they knew I was in. They know I've got car issues. They knew, they, I, they knew my entire life, even after I stopped working there. And so I thought that that was what they were calling me to do. No, literally called me and said, this is the Swanton Police Department. And I'm supposed to believe that there was nothing done about this. Or none, of, none of these people had anything to do with this. And I'm supposed to stop fighting? Uh-uh. No way. Not long ago, the state legislator in Ohio passed a bill that essentially immunizes, immunizes a worker's former employer against claims of defamation asserted with respect to an evaluation of an employee's performance through a reference check. So again, that has nothing to do with this situation here. But it says, thanks to this law, you cannot personally sue your former employer or any of its management employees unless you can prove by clear and convincing evidence 
that you that your former employer either knew the information they shared with another about you was false, and that your former employer shared this false information for the specific purpose of malignant of malignant your reputation reputation. So once again, you don't just get to do that to somebody. I at least know that I signed a dang on document that when I came became a notary and said I was going to sign and raise my hand and swear to the public office of that that office. Ministers don't even have to sign this. But it now requires us to sign that we are becoming a witness to the United States Constitution as well as the Ohio State Constitution. And we're going to uphold that. Now, if you're going to put that charge on me, then I need somebody to step in. So what was I supposed to do first before anything happens? The first thing they want you to do is contact the Ohio Civil Rights Commission. That's done. It's been done. They also want you to contact the Ohio Employment Division. Done. I took it a step further and went down the BBB's division, Better Business Bureau, 13 Action News, General Motors, the Ohio Department of Insurance. I've sent letters as far as I know that the CEO of State Farm is in receipt of them with his name on it, specifically. I'm not going to stop until these people are held accountable. I don't care who it is out there. Somebody did it. You don't want to put the blame on McNeil. McNeil, you don't want to put the blame on the, the police. Police, you don't want to put the blame on uh, 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 State Farm. State Farm, you don't want to put the blame on Lonnie Johnson. You don't want to put the blame on Mike Wells. I don't care who puts the blame where. The bottom line is you let me get robbed twice, and you're telling me that nobody's held responsible for this. Nobody. I've got evidence of what was left in the store after the dang on first robbery, we got videos and pictures, TVs on the wall, camera systems, registers, briefcases, credit repair clients, all got tax clients, all kinds. Of, she literally locked us out for an entire year. Signed an agreement that she would sign an affidavit releasing who she was talking to at State Farm on my behalf, which had no authorization. So she was talking back and forth with State Farm and they was disclosing information back and forth to the property owner and that shouldn't have been going on either. She signed an affidavit that says she's gonna tell exactly who and when and what and what person would do that. And I would sign off on the building so she'd get her building back so she could sell it. I signed off on the building under direction of my previous attorney. She got her building back. She never signed the affidavit. Never even showed up for court. And nothing was done. Fulton County. Nothing was done. Now, if that happened to me here in Toledo, I'm going to be held in contempt of court. I'm going to have a bench warrant. And now I've made it worse on myself because I'm riding around with a bench warrant. So as soon as I get pulled over, they're cuffing me. I'm going down because I'm driving around with a bench warrant because the judge said something on paper, on order, that I chose not to do. She didn't even come back to court about it. Somehow she got her building back. And we never got our property back. Recorded land contract. Un under the same Swanton Police Department's watch. When I got notified about it, I called the police department and they told me that I had to drive back out there at nine o'clock at night to file a police report because they couldn't take my report over the phone. My aunt told me, you better not. And I'm glad I took her advice because ain't no telling what would have happened to me. They know what they did to me. I've never been in trouble in my life and to be treated that, this way by this community that once you can look back, there's the news articles of me and my wife cutting the ribbon with the mayor. 
I'm rubbing elbows with all the people in the downtown here. I'm, they're using my electricity for their little Halloween hoopla stupid parties out downtown. They're blowing up blow, uh, little blow up parties, whatever animal junk for kids. They were using our electricity. That's the kind of connection I had with downtown. And the only video they could produce is some shadow of somebody walking across the front of the building. And I guess because it's a black shadow, it had to be me, right? Are you kidding me? My skin ain't even black. This is a shadow of somebody walking by and they're literally trying to say with no evidence that I had something to do with it. And trying to tell me what I had in value in this store when there was no way to track back then CBD. Banks weren't letting us run CBD. We had to run stuff, PayPal, some, some payments we had to take with PayPal, some payments we could get away with cash app, some payments we could run through Square because at that time during the CBD industry, it was not okay with banks. They didn't like any product with THC in it. That's why we were not a THC store. We were helping 50 and above able people that had issues, arthritis, they were coming to get our lotion. They were coming to get our rubs. The damn uh, physical therapist in town was referring his customers to us in town. A doctor. 100 five-star ratings in eight months. $138,000 in sales. Me, my wife, and my sister. And you're going to sit back here and think that I'm just going to relax on this? No. You called me acting like the police, McNeils. And you got to pay for that. No, brother. Hell no. Because you know what? I would have to. I would have to. If I caught anybody on the phone right now and they had evidence of me acting like the police, I promise you I'd be in handcuffs tonight. And I ain't just walking out. No, no, no. It ain't happening. Because they don't do that to us. That's not what happens. So you, you, you literally can just, this happens in February. I've been sounding the alarm since and ain't nothing been done about it. Nothing. In fact, I just got another phone call from him a week ago. I ignored it. I recorded the evidence of it. Nothing being done about it. Nothing. Swanton, Ohio. That's what they did to me. And I can tell by looking at McNeil's Facebook, they still are not, the old leopard don't change his spots. Ain't no black people buying cars out there. Why? Let's go look at all the car deals I signed up for 10 years then. Let's pull them. Let's look at the differences. Let's look at what we had, to, what, 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 what went down truthfully, after, besides me putting up what you calling me, Harambe, Toby, the token black guy. You ain't come to help me or my family through this situation. You sat back and watched me from the afar and you laughed and you joked. Well, you took the joke too far when you acted like the same supposed to be law enforcement that was protecting the serve. You protected in the serve and you two minutes from my business. I promise you if alarms, if alarms would have went off at McNeil's, them cops would have been there sooner than that. Or Tano's, the pizza door that was right next door to us. They would have been there sooner than that. But you want to sit back and tell me like I'm a two-year-old that you were late for what reason? Even if you went to my old location, it was two minutes across the railroad track. It doesn't take an hour. What happened during that hour that State Farm doesn't want to deal with? You were supposed to be my insurance company, and that's where the thought begins. Not on Marquis Kimball, you scams. So I'm not taking my foot off the brakes. No, sir. So you better believe I was waiting to bring you guys your Memorial Day joy today. But I could not without uh, recognizing our veterans first. But I ain't taking my foot off the brake. I ain't not off the gas. No. Y'all sat back and did that to me for seven years, and I never once bothered y'all. I never once came back at y'all, never once said, I just took it. I, my family and friends like, I don't know how you do it. I'm like, shoot, I'm driving a brand new $100,000, $40,000 car. I'm making 100 grand a year. I mean, you take a young kid like that who has a wife and kids, what you doing? It gave me a life that a lot of people I know to this day still have never been able to achieve. 
So for that, I I would take the sacrifice. That's the silent sacrifice. People think it's all oh, easy. No, it's not easy to be called Humrambi and you the finance manager. It's not easy to be called the token black guy and you got to smile it off and laugh it off and smile it off and laugh it off. It reminds me of the stories my grandmother used to tell me about how she had to do that at her job. But back in them days, you was forced to do that. T today, I could have complained. I could have went far with it. I let it go and I said nothing about it to nobody. But you get to call me acting like the police and I'm supposed to believe you didn't have nothing to do with the vandalism, breakism, destruction, the nigger spray, all that on my wall, all that stuff, y'all. And then the second time, somebody out there need to be investigated. Stay firm, I'm waiting on you. Do I got to call a prosecutor's office? I mean, what needs to happen now? Because these complaints have been filed. I'm giving you the opportunity to make this right. You're not just going to walk away from this. My family has already been through too much. At this point, like, I mean, my whole entire, everything I worked hard for was ripped from me in uh, a matter of months. Had insurance with the neighborhood insurance scam. Jeff Lambert, everybody. Oh, he came right in and sat down with me. Didn't even go through the store. Had insurance in a matter of 45 minutes. That's how kind of connections I had in downtown. But somehow the day of the, the incident, he doesn't, he ignores my call nine to, I call his office nine times and I'm, I'm ignored. He's six minutes from me. And then because I called the 1-800 number to make my claim like I should have as an insured person after having this insurance, as long as we had the store open, they said I was, I was too eager. I was too eager. So it looked like I, I, I'm, 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 I'm doing this. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. That's what they did. After they started paying the claim out, gave like $2,000 to get some of the water cleaned up. And then just abruptly, seven days after the break-in, chose to investigate the minister, M.L. Kimball, and took a year because they couldn't find nothing. See, you don't take it. Huh. Let me explain something to you. When you're investigating somebody and it takes you a year to come up with something, that's evidence that you're a scam because you would know in two months if I'm a scam, if you're really doing a full investigation like you claim, you'd know in two months. It took you a year to say that I showed up, very braggadocious, bunch of jewelry, wearing a loud tie with a suit, blue suit, blue suit. Wrote this out like that on documents. State Farm's attorney. And I'm supposed to believe they didn't, wasn't painting no picture of Mr. Kim. Come on, man. This whole thing was racist as hell. And I've been sounding the alarm. And now I need some more sounders, y'all. Don't watch me and just don't help me. If you help me, I'll remember you. You better believe it. If I know you sharing my stuff, I know you are helping me get this out with, until we get the noise. Because guess what? My fake ass attorney that I had beforehand told me not to go to the news. Don't talk about the racist stuff because it's going to mess up the claim. Well, guess what? We never even got our day in court. State Farm somehow weaseled this out. And the next thing you know, my attorney was telling me in 24 hours before the court date, you're going to have to go back and refile the entire case again. We're going to dismiss it because if we don't, we're going to lose bad faith. We're going to lose defamation of character. We're going to this is what he's saying to me after he found all of these extra charges. He's the one found them. But the day prior to that, the judge, him, and the attorney, he, he had laughed and coming out of the courtroom while me and my friends sitting out there in the hallway. We weren't even in, in they were all in there together. But we weren't in there. Fulton County. Ohio, when I pulled into this courthouse, I knew what we were walking into. It looked like 1955 somewhere. Dang on Robert Hill, whatever that guy's name is, whatever, Confederate, whatever, flag, right downtown. This is what I walked into. It was nobody that looked like me in the city when I walked into that courtroom. Do you think they really had my back?
You really think they they thought I they walked in I walked in and they felt like I had something to do with it, even though they documented on the police report that it took them an hour to get there. I need y'all to go ahead and sound the alarm. Don't 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 just listen to me. This ain't no comedian joke. I'm not coming getting dressed every day, sitting down, sweating like I'm preaching in the pulpit or playing on the keyboard or performing every day just to be whatever. I'm doing this because I want the word out there and I want whoever else is putting up with that at their job to have the spine or have the strength to want to go and complain about it because I let it go. I took it. We talking about seven years of the same bull. Same bull. They can't say, they can't, I got, man, they got, got calls, conversations. I got text messages, like emails. When we go to court, oh man, you know, when they go through discovery, they want everything. Oh, we can go pull all my old phones. We pull everything. I've got evidence of the racist things. Do you realize that I, when I went to work one day and I'm not going to even say the employee's name, but I will say that this went on in front of the entire staff and they all laughed about it. And this did happen. And I've got evidence of that too, because the idiot texted to me. I was having a finance meet, manager meeting in front of the sales staff and I put the, the, the uh, mar, uh, mar, uh, marker down when I got done. It was his turn to, to talk to the sales staff. And he got up and he said, what do you got? What is that, Afro Sheen? What do you got, Afro Sheen? They all laughed. At this point, I had been there three, four years, so I checked it off like they were family and they gave a damn. I'm no, they not raised. No, how much do you take? My first week of working there, I wasn't bothering anybody. I came into the lunchroom. Everybody was having lunch. Everybody's Caucasian. I'm the only black person. I don't know a soul in here. I don't know anybody. I just got hired and they're calling me finance manager and nobody respects this. So I'm walking in here with my packed lunch, trying to sit down and eat my lunch. I don't even want to associate because I don't know any of these people. So I'm turning with my back to them and I'm standing up eating by the microwave. And one of the guys stands up and says, what are you racist? And everybody busts up laughing. Now in McNeil's defense, they wrote the guy up for it. They made it known that they wouldn't tolerate it. And do I think that person that did that is an actual racist person? No, not that person. No way. But when you allow it to go on anyhow, it doesn't matter who it is. It should be a zero tolerance policy with any of that garbage on any corporation, business, anybody you want to say zero tolerance for women and sexual uh, harassment? It's zero tolerance for racist bastards. How do you get away with that? And the only reason you're being indicted now is because you, you literally called me acting like the police. I'm not supposed to be mad about that. I'm not supposed to think you had something to do with the break. Man, come on, man. Do you think I'm stupid? Do you really think I'm stupid? The mayor, all y'all just, I can't believe it. And I want this story out. Y'all can go to our YouTube page, Word on the Street Talk TV. We are growing. Do you understand me? We now have two YouTube uh, channels, okay? One has already reached almost 600 subscribers, okay? So y'all playing games if you don't get over there with me because you're going to read about me one day. You're going to remember I told you this too. You're going to read about me and don't try to be one to be on oh, what's up, man. You know how people do when you finally become something now you know it. And now I remember that dude. We was friends on TikTok. Well, you ain't never hollered at me and we ain't never talked about nothing. So don't act like when I get there and I ain't talking about getting there by them. I'm doing my own thing. I've started a platform for us to be able to talk about stuff like this because I'm sick of turning on the news and all they do is put us up as bad looking. They make us look bad on every level. We bad with we 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 the bad we bad preachers we bad musicians we bad everything actors they just tear us apart and we 
and never have a chance to have our voice heard of what goes on and still goes on to this day. Don't you say one word if you Caucasian because you do not know what it feels like to walk in the shoes that I walk in. You don't know what it feels like when somebody sizes you up because of the color of your skin, regardless of what you want to say about Martin Luther King and his speech. It was great. It sounded good. But guess what? It still goes on every single damn day of the week and we just take it. How much do we got to keep taking? When something needs to be done. If I caught any Caucasian acting like the police, they're not going to paint a pretty, pretty picture for me. They're going to make me look bad. And I'm going to have cuffs on. That's how they do us. You're not getting away with this. I'm going to keep my foot on the damn pedal. Because you know what? I ain't in trouble with the law. I don't get into, I made it 40 years without having to be in them damn chains. And you know what? This is for all of us that has had to go in them chains for no damn reason. You get to call me a criminal with no evidence of this. Oh, this is why we denying your claim. But you ain't asked the Swanton Police Department nothing about why in the hell they was late and where they was at and what they was doing. You ain't asked them nothing. You ain't got, don't give me that it was on some fire or any of that because there should have been more than two cops working in the morning, especially when you were alerted that it's a burglary. Don't give me that. Because if they said the suspects was looking like me, y'all would have been there in eight seconds. Kid you not. I promise you. If they would have said over the speakers that they look like me, I promise you the Swanton PD would have been there like this in eight seconds. Huh? Some reason, some way, somebody's going to have to explain to me like I'm a two-year-old. How in the world could Marquis Kimball or anybody he knew be involved with something like this and know that the police are going to be an hour late? It don't make no damn sense, y'all. This is why I'm sweating it out to talk to y'all. Don't tolerate it on your job. I don't care how much money they're giving you. I don't care. I don't care. If you don't want your daughter out there selling herself for some, for some money, don't you sell yourself and what our ancestors put or went through for some money, because that's exactly what I did. I should have complained then. But I was trying to take care of my family and give them a life that I did not have myself or nobody in my family close to me were ever to have, able to have. I wanted to do that for my family. I'm proud of that. I pat myself on the back for that. But when you say, oh, he just made this money. No, Marquis Kimball took some stuff. Took it. Took it. Token black guy. <laughs> I mean, you ain't going to even say token. You're going you're gonna to put black guy on the end of it. <laughs> I, I came home and told this to my family and friends. We could pull it. Guess what? When it goes to court, what I love about court is when it comes down to discovery, Everybody that they can contact. That means past employees and everybody will be hauled in to prove my case at McNeil. I don't got to try to contact them. The attorneys will. Because there's evidence, there's proof. And if some that really did give a damn about Marquise Dimble, if they claim they really did, and they were called into court, then there should be some witnesses from that, that area too. If they still really gave a damn, we'll see. Because this was public. This wasn't no secret thing. When Harambe got killed, the damn gorilla, that was a, a joke. <laughs> and once again, if you still don't believe that there was some racist behavior bullshit behind all of this, take a look at the birthday card they gave me. Here it is, McNeil's is back in your face. Explain to me why you gave me a little black boy on the front of a car, in front of a Chevy car, and everybody that signed it was white. And you want to sit there and tell me it wasn't a joke? And my dad said the other day, you can't even go into Kroger's and find no car like this. This looked like this had to be specially ordered. You can't, this is, this is something that you won't even find in Kroger's, really. They stay away from all of that stuff today, especially liberal folks. 
I took this stuff for seven years until I couldn't take the shit no more. I said, I can't do it. Y'all cut my pay with no knowledge. I'm bringing all these people out here that you can't get approved because you told me you're going to get these people approved because you're going to have cars for them. I'm bringing credit repair people out here and you telling them lies and I'm looking like a fool and I'm not getting paid nothing. And now you're cutting my pay with no knowledge. I walked out six months after taking it and I said, I can't take it no more. On top of still taking the dumbass Harambe jokes and oh, because it ain't just always come from management. It also came from the salesman. In front of management. It went on, and it went on, and it went on. Marquise Kimble ain't never said none of these people about this. But you inserted yourself into this, McNeil. So now you got to be investigated like everybody else that was supposed to have been around me. State Farm, I'm asking you, why in the hell didn't you investigate McNeil? I spent more time with them than my wife and kids over the last seven years. But you didn't ask them anything. Come on, man. I'm asking y'all to share this information. If y'all share this information, first of all, let me tell you what I want to do for my community. Now, I'm saying this to my community, and I ain't going to say no name or no call no colors, but I'm going to say my community, and y'all know who my community is. That means anybody that believes in the most high. That's the first thing. So I ain't talking about color when I say my community. Get that straight, y'all. I'm starting with Yahuwah. We start there. Hallelujah. You hear y'all on the end of that. You don't hear no God. You know, Isaiah said, beside me, there is no Savior. So I put my faith and trust in who gave me life and who's going to turn the lights out on me when it's time. You understand me? That is what I'm saying. But those that's on in that team, black, white, Mexican, whoever you are, if you're watching this, share this information. Help me get this word out. If you got a business, I've got a platform that I'm establishing every day, and it's growing every single day. We are now up to 32,000 subscribers on one channel and almost 600 on another. Don't be the last one to come in. And then by the time I get all the way up there, I ain't going to say Steve Harvey level or Oprah, and, 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 but, you know, I might be get up there to Montel and everybody get to know who you know, somebody know who I am. Because I developed this specifically for those that want to have a, a voice. We can talk about anything. It started off as a Bible study channel, strictly Bible study. But I don't want to be that kind of preacher where I'm always shoving the, the scriptures at you, man. They're doing that, been doing that for years in church. And that's why they can't keep nobody. That's why the church is a scam. No, that, no, let's walk through this together and see what it means and make sure we both understand it and we both get it. So if I if I say something that you say is ridiculous, well, then show me. You can't show me, then you're ridiculous because I'm going to show you. So that's what my Bible studies was represent. You go and look at my catalog of Bible studies, y'all. I done went through the apocrypha. The last three years gave you books they took out. I done tore apart every scripture. You can go back and look that up on the channel as well. It's all free, y'all. I ain't asking for nothing. Somehow, some way, since 2021, when we started the channel with 26 subscribers, we now have swelled over 32,000. And we've got several Facebook groups, several Facebook pages. We're, we're starting to get some, some uh, a brand with what my vision was. And I want this platform to be shared. So you got an issue. I don't care what kind of issue it is. Let's talk about it first because I, want it, I, don't, want it, I don't want it scripted. I want it real. And I want to put out, uh, you know, uh, enough knowledge for people to know we don't it, like a week notice, you know, so people got time to get ready for it. I don't want nothing thrown down people's throat. I don't care what it is, but you got a business, you got, you know, you, I don't care if you're selling turkeys. I don't care if you're a preacher and you just want to give your word. I ain't going deb to debate you. This ain't that dang for this. This platform is for you to share. And I'm offering that to you if you connect with me and let's share You'd be surprised how much you can get off of, off of my platform and I can get off your platform and everybody gets to win together. See, that's the problem. Everybody's trying to do it on their own and, and this and that. I can show you some tricks where you won't spend a dollar growing your subscribers. I did it. Ask some of the people that know. I mean, look at my resume. Look at that. 
Web websites, uh, uh, flyers, the uh, I'm a notary, uh, credit repair, then they have passive income, starting a business, taxes. I you have all of that when you connect with me. You think I charge for all this information? I'm offering my platform to you so we can connect and grow together. That's 32,000 people you don't even know that's going to see what you got. I don't care if you're selling hair products. I don't give a damn if you're cutting grass. Take some pictures of you pushing them damn lawnmower. What's wrong with that? I did it when I was a kid. I, did, I took care of them. Man, are you serious? I was out there making $20 a yard, and back then that was good money when I was 10, 10 12, all the way up 15. 15, I was getting snow, pushing snow. My my grandmother's whole neighborhood knew who I was because I was coming to get that. I knew very early what it meant to work. And all of that was robbed from me. And now I'm supposed to just go back into the community and, and pick my life back up with, no, I can't do that. You took it all from me. And you think you just go casually walk away from that State Farm, McNeil, General Motors, I don't care who. Somebody got to be held accountable. But back to what I was saying, if, if you got a, uh, why, why we got to see Patty LaBelle stuff? I love Patty. Don't you get me wrong. If you say something wrong about the godmother's uh, soul, we're going to have problems. We're going to have issues. We're falling out. I'm telling you right now. I love everything she cooked, all her all her recipes, all of it. I'm I, I, weak at the knees. But why do we have to always wait to see her stuff come up? And some of y'all know how to make just as good uh, 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 damn, uh, uh, what, what, uh, banana pudding or, or sweet potato pie. It might be better than hers, but you won't share with nobody what you got, how you know. So I can't, I don't know how to make that. I'm a chef and can't make sweet potato pie. But guess what could happen if you knew how to make the bomb one? You'd be selling this stuff on, on, on across the world, shipping them. You know, that's how factories get started. See, we don't help each other, and then we sit back and say, no, nobody won't give us nothing. We're right running the rental center. No. Why not when we get these opportunities, take them? You do hair, you wash cars, you I don't bake cookies, you I don't give a damn. I've got 32,000 people I'm sharing with you. We're gonna get on the platform, we're gonna plan it out nice. Your picture gonna be on there. So if you got a problem, that's you. You better fix your picture how you want. Tell me the one I don't let me go on your page and figure it out myself because I'm gonna pick it out. And once I pick it out and I start designing, I'm not going back 50 times to re redesign it because you don't like the pic. I take pics with no filter. I believe in that. I don't like this make believe scam today. I don't, I hate it to be honest with you. I can't stand the scam of today where everybody got to put on paint and face up and makeup and fake earrings and fake eyebrows. And it's a scam. I can go out here and get a man unit if I wanted to. No, I lost my hair. Because the most high y'all said, Mr. Kimball, you're going to be bald. And I'm good with that. You know? So I'm going to go filter with no filter. You know, period. But if you have a specific picture, you know, and get my right side on, and give, me, give me the picture. Because I'm going to create a nice platform and I'm going to share it on all of my platforms. Every one of my Facebook groups, every, we've got several. Go to Facebook and type in Word in the Street Talk TV. You don't believe me? Go look it up. We're on Twitter. We're on uh, Twitch. we got a Twitch channel. We're on everywhere you think. You type in Word on the Street Talk TV and see if we pop up. Click follow, like, let's share together. Because when you and I agree on what your topic is going to be, because I'm going to let you pick the topic. I don't want to argue about nothing. Y'all know my point. If you go back and watch some of my videos, we ain't got to go. We ain't, I ain't, this ain't for me to argue back and forth because y'all know where I stand on everything. But this platform, I want it to be for us to share. And it's not for me to ask for an offering from you in return like these scams online are doing. That's what they've done become. They've just become overnight scams, finding ways to get money out your pocket. I ain't once asked you for a dollar. I said, connect with me. Let's share. And let's put some of your ideas in front of my people. My 32,000. I know there ain't many, much people. Y'all might got more than that. But you know what? It grows every day. I get subscribers every day. Every day I wake up, my it, every day I can show you the stats. You look at some of my, my videos. And I can show you how to do it. Now, if that happens, I got to charge you. That's my business, y'all. Y'all can't be mad at that. I got to feed my family, got to keep the lights on. So you can't be mad at my business. 
because that's what I would do. I would, but I give you a discount if we partner. You get a hell of a discount for what I can show you. You'll have subscribers within six months. You'll be looking at 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 people and your channel paying you when you're putting content on it because that's what happens with YouTube in case you didn't know. So then now every time you put your video up or your sweet potato pie, somebody getting, you getting paid for that. When somebody, when they put an ad between that video, you getting dollars. That paid me $900 the last month, y'all. Just because people were going to the channel watching stuff. It, it, it don't got to be me. I don't, everybody don't know me. I got about 57,000 watching me do Al Green and they loved it. But I got a million, two million actually, watching 36 seconds of Sanford and Son, y'all. And YouTube paid me $490. Now, it's not just putting the clip up there. It's a trick. I know the trick. That's all I got for y'all today. Y'all enjoy your Memorial Day. Like I said, I have high respect and regard for all veterans of all nationalities, of all race, every sex, whatever their sexual orientation is even. If you fought for this country, you are old this day and more, in my opinion. Biden, where you at, man? Don't get out here talking about you want to vote and you can't get, show me where you at when our people up in these veteran hospitals licking, you know, like it was, then they got the worst treatment in the world. Don't give me that, Biden. Where you at, man? At least Trump talked about taking care of the people that fought for this country, you scam. You want to get up here and glorify, uh, what's his name? What, 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 the dude, they, they, they choked out and I, I'm not justifying that. But the reality of it is when you look up the evidence of who that person was, leaving him out nameless, he had nine, ten charges with one trying to stab a pregnant woman. And Biden, you get out there and, 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 and glorify that. What about all them people that died in these wars that didn't get paid? What about the ones that didn't get the GI Bill? What about them? That's what Memorial Day should also represent. Not just the ones out there on that, on that, uh, that was on that field. What about the ones that got gypped, that came off that field and didn't get the same treatment? Folks, we still fighting this today, every day. You don't want to believe me? Just give it a few days. You'll see. Somewhere, somehow. Everybody ain't making it up. I come to you with receipts when I'm telling you these things about my former employer. I'm not making it up to get back at them. They called me acting like the police. And those videos are also on the YouTube platform. So don't forget to like, share, comment, get, get your barbecue in today, and leave that pork alone. All right. Till next time. Be blessed on purpose.